This is Colin Selig of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on the kinetic equations of motion for rotation about a fixed axis. It's from Chapter 17.4 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to analyze the planar kinetics of a rigid body undergoing rotational motion. Activities include applications, rotation about an axis, equations of motion, and some problem solving. So here's an oil rig. The crank undergoes rotation about a fixed axis caused by a driving torque from a motor. As the crank turns, a dynamic reaction is produced at the pin. This reaction is a function of angular velocity, angular acceleration, and the orientation of the crank. If the motor exerts a constant torque m on the crank, does the crank turn at a constant angular velocity? How can we analyze the forces at the pin connection? The pendulum of the Sharpie impact machine is released from rest when theta equals zero degrees. Its angular velocity omega begins to increase. Can we determine the angular velocity when it is in a vertical position? On which property of the pendulum does the angular acceleration alpha depend? What is the relationship between this property and alpha, the angular acceleration? When a rigid body rotates about a fixed axis perpendicular to the plane of the body at point O, which you see here, the body's center of gravity, G, moves in a circular path about O. Thus, the acceleration of point G can be represented by a tangential component. A sub G tangential is equal to RG alpha and a normal component, which is equal to R omega squared. R sub G is the vector from the point O to the point G. Since the body experiences an angular acceleration, its inertia creates a moment of magnitude I G alpha equal to the moment of the external forces about the point G. So we can write the scalar equations of motion as summation of forces in the normal direction is equal to mass times acceleration of the mass center in the normal direction. And we know that the normal acceleration is R omega squared, so this becomes M R sub G omega squared. And the summation of the forces in the tangential direction is equal to the mass times acceleration of the mass center in the tangential direction. And we know the acceleration in the tangential direction is equal to R times alpha, so this becomes M R sub G alpha. And the last equation, summation moments about the mass center is equal to the mass moment of inertia about the mass center times alpha, the angular acceleration. Now remember that the summation of moments about the mass center may be replaced by a moment summation about any arbitrary point. So summing the moment about the center of rotation yields this is equal to I G alpha plus the mass times the vector R G times acceleration of the mass center in the tangential direction. Well, this I can rewrite this as I G plus M R G squared alpha. From the parallel axis theorem, we know that mass moment of inertia about point O is equal to the moment of inertia about point G plus m r sub g squared. Well, this term is the same as this term. So therefore, the summation of moments about O is equal to the mass moment of inertia about point O times alpha. So let's establish a procedure for analysis. Problems involving the kinetics of a rigid body rotating about a fixed axis can be solved using the following process. First, as always, establish an inertial coordinate system and specify the sign and direction of the normal and tangential components of the acceleration of the mass center. Draw a free body diagram accounting for all external forces and couples. Show the resulting inertial forces and couple, typically on a separate kinetic diagram. Compute the mass moment of inertia, I sub G or I sub O. Write the three equations of motion and identify the unknowns. Solve for the unknowns. Use kinematics if there are more than three unknowns, since the equations of motions allow for only three unknowns. So here's an example. The uniform slender rod has a mass of 15 kilograms, and its mass center is located at point G. Find the reactions at the pin O and the angular acceleration of the rod just after the cord is cut. So since the mass center G moves in a circle of radius 0.15 meters, that's this distance here, its acceleration has a normal component towards O and a tangential component acting downward and perpendicular to R sub G. So here's our free body diagram. 
we show the reaction forces at the pen and the weight of the rod. On the right side is the kinetic diagram. We show the mass times the acceleration of the mass center in the tangential direction, and we show IG alpha. Now omega is zero here because the cord was just cut, so the rod has the angular velocity of zero. So the normal component of the acceleration at point G is equal to zero in this problem. So I'll establish a coordinate system, uh, normal and tangential. So the summation of forces in the normal direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the mass center in the normal direction, which is equal to m times rg omega squared. But since omega is zero, as we said, the summation of forces in the normal direction is equal to zero. So the only force in the normal direction is O sub x, so that is equal to zero. Now we'll sum forces in the tangential direction and set that equal to the mass times acceleration of the mass center in the tangential direction, which is the mass times Rg times alpha. So the tangential direction is positive downwards. So I have the weight, which is 15 kilograms times 9.81 minus O sub y is equal to the mass, which is 15 times Rg, which is 0.15 times alpha. So this can be rewritten as Oy is equal to 147.15 minus 2.25 alpha. So there's one equation. And now we'll sum moments about the point O, and that's equal to the mass moment of inertia about point G times alpha plus the mass times R sub G times alpha times R sub G again. So the moment about O due to the weight is counterclockwise, so it's positive. So I'll have 15 times 9.81 times the distance between G and O, which is 0.15. Now the moment of inertia of a rod about its center is 112 ml squared. So IG is 112 times the mass, which is 15, times the length, which is 0.9 squared. That's Ig times alpha plus the mass, which is 15, times Rg, which is 0.15, times alpha times 0.15. So this equation reduces to 22.07 is equal to 1.35 alpha. So therefore, alpha is equal to 16.4 radians per second squared. And from that equation, we just derived equation 1, which was... O sub y is 147.15 minus 2.25 alpha. Now, since we know alpha, we can calculate O sub y, and it's 110 newtons. So here's another problem. We have a sphere with mass 15 kilograms and a rod with mass 10 kilograms. They form a pendulum, and it has an angular velocity of 3 radians per second when theta is equal to 45 degrees. And also, there's an externally applied moment of 50 newton meters clockwise. Find the reaction at the pin O when theta equals 45 degrees. So we'll draw the free body diagram and kinetic diagram of the rod and sphere as one unit, and then we'll apply the equations of motion. Okay, here on the left is the free body diagram. We have the weight of the rod, the weight of the sphere, and the reaction forces at the pin O. Now we're going to use normal and tangential coordinate system here since we're rotating about a fixed axis. So on the right we see the kinetic diagram. First we'll sum forces in a normal direction and that'll be equal to the mass times acceleration of the mass center in the normal direction. So in the normal direction we have O sub n minus the weight of the rod in the normal direction which is minus 10 times 9.81 times cosine of 45 minus the weight of the sphere, which is 15 times 9.81 times cosine of 45. So we have a composite body here, so I'm going to break up the right side of the equation into two parts. So first I'll deal with the rod, mass of the rod times the acceleration of the mass center of the rod in the normal direction. So it's half the length of the rod, which is 0.3 squared times omega squared, plus now we'll deal with the sphere. Its mass is 15 kilograms. And this acceleration 
is r omega squared, where r is equal to 600 plus 100 millimeters r, 0.7 meters, times omega squared. We were told that omega is equal to 3 radians per second, so therefore O sub n is equal to 295 newtons. So let's write that down so we don't forget O sub n is equal to 295 newtons. Now as some forces in the tangential direction, that's equal to the mass times acceleration of the mass center in the tangential direction. So in the tangential direction, I have O sub t plus the component of the rod's weight in the tangential direction, which is 10 times 9.81 times sine of 45. And now the weight of the sphere in the tangential direction, that's plus 15 times 9.81 times sine of 45. Now again, I have a composite body, so I'm going to break up the right-hand side of this equation into two parts. So first, I'll deal with the rod. So this equals to the mass of the rod times acceleration of the mass center of the rod which would be half the length, which is 0.3 times alpha, plus the mass of the sphere, which is 15 kilograms, times its tangential acceleration of its mass center, which is 0.7 times alpha. And this simplifies to OT is equal to minus 173.4 plus 13.5 alpha. So let's write down what we know so far, O sub n was 295 newtons, and O sub t is minus 173.4 plus 13.5 alpha. Now we're going to sum moments about O and set that equal to the moment of inertia about O times alpha. So first I'll deal with the weight of the rod, so that is the component in the tangential direction, so that is 10 kilograms times 9.81 times cosine of 45 times the distance between the mass center of the rod and point O, which is 0.3 meters. Now that's a negative moment since it's clockwise. And now we'll do the moment due to the weight of the sphere, so that's minus 15 times 9.81 times cosine of 45 times 0.7. Remember, we have an applied moment of 50 newton meters, and that's clockwise, so it's minus 50. So that equals the moment of inertia about point O of the rod in the sphere. So we're going to do this in two parts again. So first I'll deal with the rod. The moment of inertia of a rod about its end is one-third times the mass, which is 10, times the length, which is 0.6 squared, times alpha, plus... Now the moment of inertia of a sphere about its center is two-fifths the mass times the radius squared. So I can write two-fifths times the mass, which is 15 kilograms, times the radius, which is 0.1 meter squared. Now I need to shift that moment of an axis using the parallel axis theorem over to point O. So I add in 15 kilograms times the distance between the center of the sphere and point O, which is 0.7 times alpha. So from this I get that alpha is equal to minus 16.7 radians per second squared. So it's negative, so it's clockwise. And now that I know alpha, I can go back to this equation right here and solve for O sub t. So O sub t comes out to be 52.1 newtons. Now I want the magnitude of the reaction at O. So O, reaction force at O is going to be equal to Distinguish that with a zero. Square root of 295 squared plus 15, 2.1 squared. That's 299 newtons. This concludes 17.4, Kinetic Equations of Motion for Rotation about a Fixed Axis. Next up is Chapter 17.5, Kinetic Equations of Motion for General Plane Motion.